It took folks a few more minutes to show up. So, Sorry, baby. <laughs>
Anybody wants a bottle of water or something? Um, yeah, sure, we'll get started. Hi again, folks. Thanks for all for coming. Uh, my name is Ian again. This is our second meeting of the Kansas Psychedelic or more Psychedelic Society. Um, so I'm seeing how it goes. I appreciate you all for showing up. Um, we'll see how things go month to month. Uh, I'm still planning to hopefully um, post these on, I think, the fourth Sunday of each month. Until times change, or if other folks have other times that would work a little bit better for them, uh, we can move on from there. Um, but uh, today we have Daniel, my good friend Daniel Harkins. Uh, right. I met Daniel out in Kansas City um, almost two years ago. Close to, yeah, close to, close to. Um, uh, we met um, initially out in Jefferson City, out in Missouri, at uh, the state capitol. Um, Daniel and a couple other veterans were there talking to uh, representatives uh, in the state um, capital, just putting forth, um, I guess, interest in the space, um, seeing what representatives would be interested in further discussion of veteran rights, um, veteran care, um, and then what kind of landscape that looks like for talking to folks in conservative Midwestern America. So I think you guys have had some pretty good results. Um, I guess just like getting bills introduced, um, getting um, representatives more on board with the whole process. Um, so it is a slow moving process, but it moves uh, to some degree, um, which is wonderful. Um, so I guess for today, uh, the plan was really just to have Daniel talk um, for however long he needs to talk, I guess. Uh, and then we'll have another general like question and answer session. Uh, folks have questions or if people want to share maybe experiences they've had in the past, just a nice, safe, open space for people to talk about um, what they need to talk about. And uh, yeah, that's the main intention for the group is just to build community where it's needed, um, provide support for each other as peers, um, see where things go from there. Um, so I guess before we begin, begin, um, I'd like to do a little spring exercise just to get ourselves kind of settled in. Um, it was present just thinking about where we are and what we're doing, and where we can go from there. So um, I invite you all to yeah, do a little posture check, maybe roll your shoulders back, turn your neck and your head from side to side slowly, feeling where there may be tension, recognizing it and kind of moving through it. And I'll try to align the, the top of the skull with your neck that's supporting your head and then down your spine, down into your sit bones. And while you're kind of feeling your body, we'll take a, a big inhale in, fill your lungs up, and then we'll take a couple little sips up at the top to really fill your lungs. Hold that for a second. Exhale. And then we'll take some more breaths like this. A big inhale up, fill the lungs. A couple little sips at the top to break the little up. Hold for a sec. And then exhale. And then on this last, last little inhale, we'll think about the day you've had, the week you've had, all the things that have kind of led you up to this moment. And then on the exhale, just let everything go. Slowly bring yourself back to the room. Hands out. 
quickly around this. So, uh, and then we can begin. Do we want to do names now or do we want to do, do introductions? Yeah, let's just do a brief, brief round of introductions. Um, hi, my name is Ian Cook. Um, I am currently hosting and facilitating these meetings because uh, I thought there was a need for something in Lawrence where folks could talk about psychedelics, uh, mental health, emotional wellness in a very intentional way for the betterment of ourselves and others, community, and all that good stuff. Um, I'm Doc. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Josh. I'm Daniel. <laughs> I'm Bob. Uh, you, you got me to do that. I've been trying to make time to do this. I've been doing it with the kit. Your last name, Ronnie? Eleven Dustin. Eleven Dustin. Uh, I uh, saw the flyer for the Lower Psychedelic Society, and I'm very interested. Um, so, a little background about me um, I struggled with like, depression and anxiety back in high school. And so, um, I go to the psychiatrist and stuff like that. And the first thing they want to do is put me on Geodon or um, Lexapro. Um, and I wasn't really interested in that. But we were looking at, like, um, not psychedelics necessarily, but I was looking in that field and stumbled upon psychedelics, and I've always felt like this connection, like a spiritual connection. Um, so I started looking at like morning glory seeds, um, and then you know the Aztec and uh, um, I guess indigenous people of South America. I'm uh, Mexican myself, so um, felt really connected to that, and uh, I've been looking at stuff like that, um, which has led me to go to KU. Uh, I'm going for social work, currently a junior. Um, for my master's, I would love to work in an academy uh, psychotherapy or like just maybe go to Oregon to work um, in this field. I'm extremely interested. At, I've done presentations about uh, psychedelics to my peers and stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm just really interested to get into this space. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Um, I appreciate your curiosity and your initiative in coming up with something like this. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about all that. Yeah, ketamine. Uh, I, I partook in ketamine uh, therapy a couple of years ago. Yeah, I watched the previous um, meeting so, because yeah. I want to be confident. Awesome. Very, very, very happy. So, thank you. Um, I'm Chris, or Flowers, people call me either. I'm just, I'm just here to learn. My name is not my good <laughs> <laughs> My name is Constance Houston, and uh, I'm interested in everything to do about the uh, educating the public in psych with psychedelics, uh, creating the legalization of therapies and different types of scientific research on psych psychedelics, and uh, to fully embrace what Bill Wilson said that uh, LSD is completely harmless in the treatment of. Uh, Alcohol and drug addiction, and that it needs to be used. And he used it many, many times. He is the alcohol and drugs founder. Yeah, very interesting. Um, yeah, the use of psychedelics with addiction and substance abuse um, is a growing field. Um, I think that one's growing along with like, veterans treatment. Um, that's, that's one of the big spheres as as well as coming up. Yeah, very constant. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, and without further ado, hang on, hang on to Daniel. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Daniel Harkins. Thanks, everybody, again, for being here and sharing the space. I guess we'll just kind of start with who I am and what I'm in the first place. Uh, so, I was a Marine Corps veteran. I served from 2008 to 2014. Uh, so, I did just around six years. Uh, wasn't a combat veteran. Uh, a lot of the traumas of the child. Uh, Experience through the military, mostly lost friends, and war combat veterans, friends that just uh, ended up committing suicide because of the pressures and experiences of the military. Um, and when I got out in 2014, 
had, like a lot of veterans, like acclimating back to being a civilian. It's you know it's a different different stream of different stream of life. You know different flow um, of what your character is, like the things that you have learned are completely different. Um, so adjusting, you know, like getting back to just being a civilian, getting, getting back to being a person of being stuck in and, and being around people that were not military minded, you know, and, and for a long time, you know, I, I got out of the military and was going to managing restaurants, something like I had never done before, just like fell straight into that and figured out how much I hated it. <laughs> I'm like a lot of people that, that, that fall, fall into the restaurant industry. Um, and a lot of just being unhappy with circumstances kind of put more pressure on the things that I was like having trouble with that kind of put back in the back burner. Um, and as time went on after I got out of the military, what about four years of dealing with just PTSD and in the form of anger? I was uh, mad all the time. I uh, just had like massive inner rage. Most people irritated me. Um, I always had good patience, but I felt that I was losing it. Uh, and found myself working in a space that was a little bit more open minded towards these things. And found some friends that thought that I could probably use the help of psychedelics. Because um, at the time, a lot of veterans won't, as we go, won't admit that they're struggling. And it's very, very common. And, and I've lost over close to two dozen friends in my life to suicide. Um, you know, most of those are veterans uh, and two, two different roommates, you know, so people that I was very close with, you know, people that I adore, love, and knew what they could do if they were still here, you know, and like living with the weight of that, just being unhappy, you know, because my own circumstances, like how I got there, how I felt failed by the military system, the VA, knowing that, you know, if I talk to the VA about any of the circumstances or issues that I was dealing with, that I'd be flagged for things, the way they push People dealing with PTSD or dealing with traumas, typically it's medications that make things worse. Um, lost a lot of friends to the process of that as well. And I didn't want to take that path, so I just never talked about it. And then I had friends that, were, that I said that I was close to that knew that I had struggled and asked me if I would be interested in taking lessons with them. You know, of course, I, I thought this would be a recreational type of thing. <laughs> I said, sure, why not? Um, I didn't really know much about mushrooms at the time. And in 2018, I went to this mushroom ceremony, just took around three and a half grams of mushrooms. And it's like the weight came off, you know, like the, the pressure of everything I was dealing with, the traumas I've had in my life, the unhappiness that I had at the moment, the anger that I was dealing with, like all those things just kind of came back to me. Everything was clear. Um, allowed me to admit to myself that I was struggling, I mean, you know, because my ego, like I said, was very much in the way. And I was like wanting to blame a lot of the issues that I was having with other people, you know, and, and it was very like my own mindset was just toxic. You know, and everything that I was feeling at the time was completely against who I am. And allowed me to, to see that I could do better and I should do better if I'm capable. And, from that moment, I took a massive interest in psychedelics. Um, I kind of stopped what I was doing and went full swing into educating myself as far as like clinical data that's been learned up to this point of how, how well these things can work in the right circumstances in the right setting. Um, to an interest in working in mycology, I have a business now which I've been functioning since 2021, um, mostly as a spore bank. So I produce mushrooms specifically to sell the spores. Um, I'm in the process now of expanding my business to sell cultures and to actually do more things like this to educate, um, teach people how to cultivate for themselves. Um, and then the whole goal is to have a multitude of other things within this business as far as other psychedelics. Um, so, like a lot of the stuff that I do now is I work with things that aren't currently scheduled. So, things that are less, a little less heard of, like the, the Torah, for example, is something I'm very passionate about very dangerous psychedelic and hallucinogen, um, but I think it's most certainly a great propensity for good if it's used properly. Um, and a lot, basically since 2018, I've, I've spent a lot of time just learning more about myself so I could have these conversations with people that are, have simple interests, and not only of propounding what this space is, but healing themselves through the process. 
Um, I still obviously have things that I deal with. You know, um, I most certainly think about my friends a lot. You know, I think about people that I lost pretty often, but it's not at the same weight as what it was before. My compassion is way different. And I have all of that to attribute to psychedelic use. Um, I have many journeys to this point. Um, everyone, I have learned something new about myself, learned something new about the people around me that I care for. That's everybody. It makes me have more patience in my surroundings, whereas I haven't always had that. I've always wanted to. And I feel like this has gave me the ability to do so and not have anger. And it's pretty amazing. You know, some of you like I have always been kind of hot-headed. You know, I obviously was a Marine, so you know, I've got a fire in me. <laughs> and I have I get aggravations, you know, just like anybody else. But that those aggravations today are most something something. Well, certainly something that has turned into compassion and love, you know, and understanding that I myself have made mistakes and I myself in different places where I'm ugly, you know, so if I see something, somebody else, that maybe I can do something to help build them. And so on the side of legalization in Missouri, we're uh, focusing on legislation. Uh, since 2021 as well, I met with the lobbyist that you can think of, which is one of the main lobbyists that's been working on um, advancing psychedelic support and psychedelic legislation in the state of Missouri. Um, and then when I started with them, it really was more just a conversation piece. There's kind of bills being presented, but nobody was really listening. Um, representatives really didn't know enough about it. They really didn't have the care at the time, you know, just because they just didn't have the education. Um, and that's kind of like where I was able to step in and start bridging the gap. Like one, this is a massive veterans need. Um, on average, 22 veterans kill themselves daily, which is insane. I mean, it's crazy. And that's something that's been held for over a couple of decades now. Um, and the fact that that still happens and there's nothing really being done about it is very aggravating. Um, and slowly through this time, we had massive veterans groups that set forward to help with funding and start obviously speaking to representatives and educating more not only about the clinical evidence, but the testimonials because it means something, you know? And, and a lot of us are struggling from the same things. A lot of us are struggling from the same type of emotions, from loss of friends, to just the aggravation of being failed by our systems. Um, and that's just a start, and that's kind of what we're starting at now in Missouri, is focusing more on like the veterans' needs. Um, because obviously coming out of as being a veteran myself, you know, it, it's a massive impact for me to see other veterans that are suffering as well, that have been in far worse circumstances than I have been. You know, and the fact that like, they don't have access to these things, when it's already kind of proven that it can work in the right setting and circumstances, it's, it's, it's aggravating. Like, it's something that's like, that's where my rage is. You know, and like, my rage is having patience. My rage turns into educating myself more to, to speaking, even in places where I don't necessarily feel comfortable today. You know, I honestly don't like to speak for people, <laughs> but I've done it a lot. You know, I've kind of got used to it over the years just because I've been put in this place. And I feel like it's important. You know, every single person here has a story. You know, every single person here probably has something that they've dealt with that makes them upset. It makes them sad and they want to be better. And obviously this is something that can help all of us. And it should. You know, and, and educating each other about the efficacy of these things. You know, obviously, you're, and being honest, it, you know, psychedelics aren't for everybody. Psychedelics aren't something that obviously can't be misused, but it can. You know, obviously, we've seen those errors, you know, but miseducation has been the stump of all of this. Propaganda, obviously, has been the stump of all of this. You know, but the fact that we have, Almost every city now across this country has got this. People are sitting down and talking about it because this is real, this works. And we need to be able to talk to each other and be honest about ourselves, be vulnerable, because that's what we need as a people. We're all struggling. You know, we're all living in this world that seems to be banned, but we have the ability to change it. And I feel like this is definitely a path to do so. Because whether what your religious beliefs are, wherever, no matter what your background is, 
the use of psychedelics seems to align all of that. And none of that matters. Your faith doesn't change, it only makes it better. You know, and that's what I've learned through these experiences. Um, that's what I continue to learn by having these conversations. You know, and I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for every one of you. I don't know any of you besides this guy, <laughs> which I'm I'm so grateful for meeting, you know, and and I feel like life is so much easier now than it's ever been, even when I still have uncertainties. Because I know what I'm doing. And I know what I'm meant to do because of these experiences. And every time I sit in these spaces where I feel in, in, in unease or uncomfortable because I'm the presence, we're all the presence. And I'm, I'm thankful for it. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Very heart, heartfelt, and uh, yeah, always when we talk through a lot of residents and my experiences and Daniel's experiences, and, you know, that uh, that idea, I guess, of purpose or this intentional living uh, that comes through having these kinds of experiences and just getting closer to the self and, and who you are as a person and what you can kind of offer externally as you develop that stuff internally. It really does become a part of just sharing yourself. Of like the work that you do for yourself becomes an external thing that you can also give to other people. It's like a gift of like you found you found this purpose for this purpose, and you found this gift for yourself. And now you can get to the point hopefully where you can share with others, and, um, help others grow from a place where you can sort of see yourself of where you used to be. Um, and um, yeah, I'm very grateful to have met Daniel at the time I did because um, it helped solidify some of the ideas I had about the maybe the best ways to approach this space and, and certainly veterans um, such an underrepresented community in this country and uh, there's so much opportunity for them to, to have access to these things and so I'm, I'm super grateful to have it and have a, being able to grow that community and support the veterans in this area is super important so, so thank you. love you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was wondering if you could talk more about, um, I guess, this mycology, uh, how you kind of got started on that educational path, um, what kind of doors open for you, what, um, just what about it that drives you to be more involved in that, just the mycology side of things, but more scientific side of things. So I've always been scientific in mind. Like I've always been like, I've been driven that way, but too lazy to do it. <laughs> so, you know, I, I was a college dropout, um, kind of go a little bit more into my backstory. Um, I guess like leading it, so like how I felt. Like, but, um, so I, I had four X scholarship um, for track and field. I was more interested in leading than uh, going to go to school. So I ended up dropping out because I lost the scholarship. Um, it was really good in the athletics department, but not so good in the uh, academics department. So I went to school for art. <laughs> I say anything bad about art. Um, but, so I went to school for art, but it, not what I wanted to do, but I also didn't want to do you know, very good at like, work kind of thing. Um, so I dropped out of college, um, went into joining the Marine Corps, and it just so happened when I got into the military, the base that I got stationed on had a sister campus of my college. The, the, the university that I went to on that base. So I just started taking classes again. I completely changed the degree field when I started studying physiology. Um, which if anyone doesn't know, so you have know, bones and ligaments kind of go around the means of like being a physical therapist. Um, didn't necessarily really have a passion for that, but obviously I was an athlete, so that makes sense. <laughs> um, so I continued that path when I got out of the military. Um, I went back to school full time and remember why I hated that in the first place and dropped out again. Um, and then just kind of just bounced around from job to job. I found, found myself in the restaurant industry, like I said. Um, I did that for several years. Um, and that's when I was introduced to the psychedelic experience with mushrooms. The day after I had my first experience of mushrooms, I'm, I'm, I'm typically, if I'm passionate about something, I just go all in. And that's exactly what happened. It's like the next day I'm like, I did what was that? I mean, that day I was like, I was so overwhelmed with like what it provided for me that I was like, I have to make 
says. But I went online. I, you know, how can I cultivate this myself? <laughs> and looked it up, found like a mushroom store bank online, bought some mushrooms, watched a bunch of YouTube videos, bought some books, and just started reading. Um, and just sort of from there, I just uh, I started cultivating just the trial and error, you know, saying that if you can't start any, any new endeavor, and, and just just kept working at it um, and, and studying as much as I possibly could, um, having more experiences, um, having quote unquote trips, and learning more about myself, like learning more about how to process things. Um, and so when I started learning about mycology, especially in these like psilocybin and you know, all these portions of which matter are not legal. For example, mushroom spores are completely legal to purchase and sell in most states. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked several years like making myself proficient as my colleagues and like learning, you know, like what how can I do this as a business? You know, do I have a passion for this really? Because it takes a lot of work. My colleagues are not easy. I'm really like, nothing in science really is. You know, it just takes a lot of trial and error and a lot of, a lot of loss before you gain. Um, I did that for several years, um, from 2018 to 2021, I was working so full time, was managing a, a live play theater at the time, which is another just strange thing I fell into. <laughs> I had no theater experience, just kind of fell into that job. Um, and that allowed me to really focus more on the endeavor of becoming a mycologist and, and learning as much about the space as possible. Um, and by 2021, I felt like I was proficient enough to like run it as a business. I was like, this is no longer a hobby anymore. This is that way. I don't have the time to just keep focusing on this unless I make it a business. Um, so I did. And I really thought, obviously, at the time, you know, how do I want this business to work? You know, like for one, like I said, uh, selling mushroom sports is completely legal. Then sure, because the spores themselves do not contain suicide or silicones, and actually selling them and obtaining them is completely legal. You know, as they're sold in my packaging states, sold for microscopic purposes only. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> uh, so there's obviously a gray area around it. And you know, so I really struggled with should I do this? You know, or should I just grow functional mushrooms? Um, and I really like thought about that for a while. and. In 2021 was like I guess like my first real true coming out um and like letting like society around me know was that like close friends that this was my workspace, this is what my interest is, this is what I'm doing. Um and I met up with a magazine in Cape City called Flatman KC. Um and they wrote a story on me. Um basically just kind of letting everybody know like oh, I'm starting this business, this is what I'm doing. I know this is a great area I'm operating in, but I'm extremely passionate about this and things extremely important to give people access to these things in a way of which they can do it themselves. Um, and that's where I'm focusing now is more or less expanding like my business and being able to like educate people, um, teach people that you, know, you can provide these medicines for yourself, you can make these things for yourself. Uh, I think that's honestly just as important than providing medicine directly because like it, it, it allows you to know that you have your hand on it and makes you grow with it more. Um, and that's definitely another thing that's like allowed me to stay passionate about it. Mycology, um, I would say I'm a technobotanist, you know, because I'm interested in everything. I've worked with a multitude of psychedelics as far as cultivation and learning proficiencies of cultivation. Um, Mycology is just because of space and you gotta kind of choose a couple things when you start a business, okay. is where I'm at now. Um, but the goal is to potentially work on everything, you know, when deemed available. And that's like what I'm working on right now as far as legislation. But I'm putting a lot of my time in to align myself with hopefully that possibility to go like manufacturer for the state, you know, when that when that time comes. Um I feel like I put a lot of time in this and it's changed me and I have changed a lot of people because of the time that I put in this space and mycology and I mean just psychedelics in general are fascinating for a multitude of reasons. I mean and just past the means of healing like this, just what it is, the fact that these things exist, the, the fact that these things can have the ability to completely change somebody's perception, typically for the better. It's, it's just it's crazy. 
And then that's what drives me. And that's what drives my work now. And the fact that I've like, been able to kind of do this for the last several years and like have a business of it is like it's going on. You know, and it's just growing and growing and growing. And it just makes, I, I have so many things have just fallen in my lap, it seems to, you know, very, since I've had these experiences, I feel like every new experience is very serendipitous. You know, I, I'm always, yeah, I'm always just caught off guard, but like, okay, uh, it's a strange, I didn't, I didn't ask for this, but I'm, I'm glad it's here. <laughs> yeah. But hope that answers the question. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else have questions for Kevin? Um, you said that you find it to arise of like a count of psychedelic. Could you go a little bit into detail about that? So that was one of my guys came into in contact with uh, just by accident, you know, it's obviously some studying psychedelics came across the Torah and it's, it's very hard to find information on, which I think is kind of a good thing because it's very dangerous. It, sh it should be taken extremely serious because uh, uh, my people psychedelics, it will kill you. Um, but there is historic history of it. You know, so there is, there is like Native Americans used it for spirit guiding. Um, in India, they still use it today. A lot of times it was aphrodisiac, which I find strange. And then there's like the darker side of which it's been used, like especially down in Colombia and South America. A lot of times it's used as a drug for harming people, unfortunately, but it also has a great propensity to help people. Um, the state of which it puts you in is almost very similar to a schizophrenic state, which I've I've always found. I, I, I have friends that are bipolar, I've had friends that are schizophrenic, and I've always found fascinating like where are they at and the fact that like we as a society like turn to do these things is almost like it's bad I, I i think there's so much more to understand about bipolar disorder or like or, or about schizophrenia about these diseases that they're not necessarily diseases that they're tools um and i think that our ancestors understood these things especially a lot of, a lot of native american culture understood these things and a lot of times that that's what they were using these things for um, is to help help those people that might not be more susceptible to other experiences because um, it puts them in a similar space. So like for me, I, I, I have a very broad interest in learning more about that. You know, it's all kind of a theory, but you know, it's, I think it's a good one because it's, it's, there is a history of it. Um, and I find it very fascinating too, just because like I said, it's very dangerous, extremely hard to dose. So you really truly have to understand it. Most people won't even touch it. I mean, if you find a shaman that's willing to work with it, they know it personally. And it's like one of those things that you have to, it's like, you know, it's a very personal, right? Like most things you can kind of just give and you'll be safe in most regards. And that one like is not that, but it has such a propensity to take you so much deeper than anything else. You know, it, it, for one, it's, it's not a comfortable experience. It's it's very painful. It's typically dark. It's typically dark, but it's real. You know, and especially if it's like just like anything else, if it's used properly, properly, it feels certainly very powerful. You know, it's it's has to take with a lot of regard. You know, it's like I educate myself on it because you know it's one of those things you look up on. I'm sure you probably heard of or looked up YouTube videos like yeah. trip reports. Have you seen stuff? Like that? Yeah, yeah. Not good, not good because it's, it's typically like kids, you know, that come across it and they hear about it, do the grapevine, it's growing in their grandpa's backyard, and they want to go and have some eat a eat a couple flowers from the plant, and they typically have a very bad <laughs> experience with it. And it's one of those things I think is so powerful to be understood, you know. So like for me personally, with that one is like just love it more about it. Um, it's very interesting that it's used for a lot of things. Like it's used for a lot of pharmaceuticals. You know, it's actually the plant itself is like used a, a scopamine is actually used as a sedative. You know, so it's it's used a lot more than people would realize, but they understand like obviously how to use the pharmaceutical, you know, how to extract it and use because they have a measure for the plant itself to you know you have to have the intuition, and which I've always found very interesting as well is like some shaman will work with it because they understand it. And most shaman that work with it and understand it never have bad experiences of hurting someone. Which I find because they understand it 
on a spiritual level. And then that's another reason why I'm so interested in it. It's like spirituality behind it, you know, and then because certain things speak to you. And then deter has definitely been something that spoke to me on a very personal level. And I, I think it's just circumstances that's brought me to it, just like you know, most things. <laughs> I guess another question that I have um, specifically for my policy class is like, what policies um, do you see at play that are preventing like further legalization or further acceptance of uh, these substances? Well, I think in a lot of cases, in most states that are working on any type of legislation is like they're looking at each, for good reason, they're looking at each compound as a team. You know, so for example, like the stuff like it's happening in Oregon. You know how they decriminalize so many different things. Um, it, it, pretty amazing, you know, because that's not going to help. That's not how it's working in most other states. Like, for example, right now, Missouri, we are specifically focused on psilocybin. Um, obviously, our attention is everything else. You know, we've got to kind of start somewhere. It really just depends on the state and the output of your representatives. Obviously, Missouri is a very rich state, you know. Uh, so is Kansas, but not as bad as it doesn't seem like anymore, which is very strange. You see. <laughs> <laughs> it's changing. <laughs> um, so as far as like the policies, it, it's a lot of it, it, it. It's everything's money when it comes to politics. You know, they have to have a reason. You know, I think at the end of the day, the same reason why it's taking cannabis to get to where it's at is that it challenges a lot of the pharmaceutical drugs. And unfortunately, that is very true. That's not something that's just a conspiracy theory. That that's very real. You know, unfortunately, a lot of times politicians are paid off by these companies to keep them at their best interest. Um, and that's unfortunately why this a lot of these drugs have remained criminalized all of this time. Is the data's been there for decades, you know, and ever and, and unfortunately, even too, like seeing on the, uh, the means of the bill that we have uh, that's passed House vote in Missouri. Next, the next step is for Senate vote is basically in you know, a holdings. Period right now, so we'll see if it actually makes it there. But this is the farthest that the bill has made the psychedelics in Missouri so far, um, which is pretty amazing. But the bill specifically is just going to be providing extra funding for clinical trials in the state for veterans directly, um, and then potentially to have manufacturing as well. Um, so it took time. We had to like find the right committee to push this. You know, it's like we found the veterans committee. Well. Even though some of these politicians and some of these representatives might have interest in other, most of them are veterans too. So they're trying to really kind of tug at their heartstrings a little bit because they probably have the same experiences. Um, and I feel like that's kind of starting to happen in a lot of these other states as well. Um, but unfortunately, with most things in politics, it can take that thing. You can't expect it all at the same time. You know, so for each compound, Psychedelic, it, it, it probably comes worse. You know, I think Oregon is crazy. That's awesome, <laughs> amazing. That like you know that they were able to do something like that. Um, pioneers, but it, it's going to take a while for every other state to follow that. Um, but it's, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It is happening. It's pretty cool. cool. I uh, asked you to come back to the tour for a second. Yes, and just um, maybe say a little bit more. Might say a little bit more about uh, preparing and dosing because it is so dangerous, or at least like direct for resources. Um, I, I would because you know misinformation on this one's uh, it, it's a fact. Um, um, <laughs> and, and it's, it's something I actually don't need to be comfortable telling dose about because it's almost impossible. It is an intuition thing, hundred um, percent. There's really no means unless you have like a full model and app to actually measure things out, measure every trip to me now that's present or how good it's present. Um, that's the reason why it's so dangerous. The entire plant from roots to seed is toxic. Um, and you better have very good, very damn good reason to use that plant. So, like for me personally, I have that. I'm in this space. And the reason why like, I have personal interest in those things is because, for one, I've, I've, I've tested myself already. Um, and I'm willing to take risks that I would never do with anybody else or with anybody else try. Um, so with that one, I would say 
if you're interested in it, research, research, research. Do other things first and figure out if you really want to do that because it, it's you can get just as much with less risk out of other psychedelics. Um, but I think in certain cases, it could be the way for some people. And that's why my interest is with it. Uh, but it's, it's very interesting. I'm dosing like I wouldn't want to recommend it. You know, it, no. even if you do have a good experience, it's typically a bad one. <laughs> it's it's dark, you know, typically. Um, it's very painful. It's like physically excruciating. Um, in Unless you have like a reason to go do that, then you don't. You know, say to steer away from that. Now, yeah, interest in learning about it is sort of like the things that you know, like dating so. But it's one of those things that's it's on, on almost not worth the risk because if you mess up, you're dead. And it, it, in a multitude of ways, I mean, you can lose your mind. You know, a lot of times that's what happens to people who like really cause a psychotic break that they never come back from. Um, you know, I mean, every second that we have to do is okay. This one in particular, very dangerous and dangerous to them. Yeah. I mean, good resources are really fun. Oh, it's yeah. it gross yeah. everywhere. I mean, you got every continent, the sort of grows different species of it. Um, it's now mm -hmm. in Kansas, it actually technically is a legal suit. Oh, yeah, really. It's one of the few states actually yeah. in the United States that actually has any regulation on it. Um, every other state, for the most part, is pretty open with it. Um, which I would say Kansas is probably the best when they outrule that one because it, it literally will hurt you. And, and I think, it, 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 like I said, it's, it's most certainly culturally that it has been used. You know, that there is evidence of these things that it has been used in a multitude of ways. You know, today, like I said, in the video, they use this as effort. You have to find it insane. I find that crazy that they do it, but they understand it. They understand it. You know, it's like, what, what is it? Some of these things you can kind of just try yourself and you're going to be okay. It's like that one's not. not this one's Why not. do you think I need to? I say, if you do have an interest, you just read as much as possible. You know, mm -hmm. listen to trip reports <laughs> just because they're usually not good. They're usually not good. It's usually not an experience that you want to have. You know, I mean, there's, but. There is an experience there that's important for some people. And that's why I, I have such an interest in it. That's probably why I, I've kind of gone down that path. Um, is it's it's very overwhelming. Is that right? Like more darker than five in New York can get more <laughs> darker than like a lot of other like dark substances, and then also too, it's the, the experience can last over a week, you know, in some cases. And it's really hard to like manage what you're going to get from that because <laughs> most of the time you're going to be out of your mind. You know, so it's like it's one of those things like you have to be very controlled for us, very controlled for us. And yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I just would like to know what I'm assuming you've sort of networked and connected with other veterans uh, who have similar, you know. Similar traumatic experiences um, and brought them in, um, exposed them to you know what psychedelics can do for them emotionally and mentally and even spiritually. So just kind of maybe general, can you speak to speak to that a little bit and tell us like how the reactions to the veteran experience has been? Absolutely. Um, what's been kind of interesting is, is as far as veterans, I feel like I haven't had a big cake mm. So, I mean, this is very big that there's like a lot of there's you'd be surprised how many veterans groups are out there now, like non profits that are set up to help veterans get in contact with like shaman or to send people off to ceremonies. There's tons and there's dozens across the country now. Um, it's very huge. So, like, a lot of veterans are very, very educated on this. Like, a lot of unfortunately, what I'm finding is a lot of older veterans. Mm -hmm. Still aren't privy to it because they're not they've had so much more time to be doctored and find a way. You know, that's just too many new medication and they're just getting by this and they've never been really good. Yeah. Um, so I think that's I think kind of where it stands right now on the veteran side of things, but it's, it's been very interesting because it's very huge in the veteran community. 
I was very surprised too, especially like once I like launched my business and like started getting like more into social media and stuff like that, like how many other brand brands, especially like more women that I was working with too, that are doing the exact same thing. I guess a lot. A lot. And it's, it's crazy. And it's very, it's very, I mean, it's not crazy. It, it's completely sane. <laughs> Honestly, it's completely sane because like once you have that impact, you know you're supposed to do it. Like and, and it's very, it's been very interesting to see how fast this is growing, especially with the veterans community. It, it's rapid. Like I mean, like I, I like I speaking to the other veterans on it's like we're just ripping off each other at that point. I don't feel like I'm educating you, know, you know, and that's where it's at now, which is really cool to see. You know, and there's you know, get, you know, there's people in between. You know, like I got people that I serve with that still don't really understand it yet, but they're starting to yeah. because they need to. Right. You know, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, so like, it makes it easier to have those conversations. So like, they know this one thing with me. It's Sergeant Harper, some Marine Corps. They know, they know, no, 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 they know me now as how to do it. You know, and and we can learn from each other. You know, it's a really cool process. You know, it's, it's fascinating. That was beautiful, honestly. No way, no way to put it. And to see like how this is growing across that experience. Mm -hmm. So, are other veterans and communities in other states doing similar outreach to state legislatures? Yes. I mean, even on a federal end, a lot of like stuff mm -hmm. push on federal end and a lot of veterans groups. Now, the VA works with this, starting to get more into this, which is really cool. It's a star variety of team. You know, so like the bill that we're trying to work on right now um, for Missouri is, is trying to align direct work for clinical trials from the VA. So the VA is basically, the VA will provide the evidence that need it for those clinical kind of trials. Oh. So they're basically going to become the medical system. Yeah. You know, so like that's happening. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. That's wow. amazing. It's amazing. It's the fact that we're getting here, and it's happened pretty quick. You know, it's happened very quick. You know, very different. It's like three years ago, it was not this. <laughs> you know, and I feel like I mean, the, the the rate that it's got to now, like, uh, for example, how you make like I said, the bill that we have currently going in Missouri, and you get the unanimous of the uh, House vote, um, which is pretty surprising because of that. The conversation they weren't all agreeing on, mm -hmm. you know, but they were all kind of forced into passion, yeah. you know, which is. I think is what it kind of takes. You know, you just kind of sit them over it's like you gotta make it feel. Right. You know. And everything's give and take, like I said, in politics is kind of how that is, is what it is, you know, and it's how it's always been, you know, that have way we have to work with it. But the fact that the veterans' presence is so heavy, I think it's gonna be what steers everything we're doing. So you know, so the veterans are veterans overall seem like overall at this point you're talking about the last voice. Because it, it, most veterans are screwed by what's been provided with them. Right. You know, their systems are archaic. You know, I mean, even if you do truly have an issue, you know, it, it might be two, three months before you get the system right. You know, a lot of that time is too late. What are you going to find to do? You're getting something that's not helping you. It's a different extent. It's something that makes your experience worse. You know, so a lot of veterans are they're reaching out and like they're finding you that because. Online, the final break, 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 which is amazing. Right. Um, could you mention some of the groups that you've worked with or are working with? So, um, no groups directly that I'm working with. I'm more or less uh, like just, no, just talking and facilitating with, um, like Warriors Projects, um, uh, Front Style is like a, is a veterans clothing company that uh, started an awful lot a couple of years ago. And they've been, they're huge. I mean, they're working on like legislation everywhere. They're working not, not just in say Missouri, they're like they've been working on things in the federal wind, very loud. Um, you know, like I said, they started off as a veterans clothing company. And obviously, a lot of people that, that were in that company, a lot of the guys that were in that company had these experiences themselves and they were just to do. So it expanded past just being a company, but to do something that truly benefit the other veterans. Um, and so I gotta say, they're probably the largest one that I've been dealing with. Run style. Had run style, which has been amazing. Um, just because they have like, it's, it's, it's nice to start having, because I've, I've been doing a lot of this on my own, you know, for the last several years. I know there's been other veterans that are like coming in and out, stuff like that, but as far as being consistent, 
and being present, but sitting down and talking to the representative and trying to educate as much as possible. It's been in and out. Yeah. You know, so like the fact that we have to that we actually have a, a group that's a non for profit, like backing this is huge as well. Yeah. You know, it's a massive operation, you know, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. But yeah, there's a main one. And then Heroic Arts Projects. Yeah, Heroic Arts Projects, project, which means actually I knew about it before. And I was like, I was so caught off guard when I was like, but it's the first time that I came, you know, I was like, yeah, I know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's so many, there's so many different veterans groups out there that are starting with the non for profits. Like, I, um, to thank them all up and have a brain for them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just heard my folks, Heroic Arts Project. Uh, was founded by uh, an army ranger, Jesse Gould, um, after he had his own ayahuasca experiences um, in South America. Um, and the non it's a nonprofit, they help facilitate uh, groups of veterans that go down to uh, Peru yeah, yeah. Um, to take part in ayahuasca ceremonies. Um, and they help with the preparation and the integration. Um, they have mental health professionals that help uh, with the whole process. Um, and then they recently started partnering with the University of Texas, I believe, and some other um, no, 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 no. clinical trials for uh, psilocybin. Um, so they're getting more involved with like trials to universities um, and studies. What was the name of the pro and pro's product? And they started that was 2006. It has been around for quite a while. Um, <laughs> grown pretty rapidly. I mean, and the thing is, like, like I said, the, the veteran, like veterans means for this is, is huge. You know, so anybody who steps into this grows pretty quickly, especially I mean, and, and it's pretty cool because it, it's it, it's a rapid fire effect. I mean, it's it's been pretty amazing to see like all of these different sections of the groups and their own principalities. Um, I've come in for in providing different avenues for people to have access, to, which is been probably. One of the coolest things to see, you know, the fact that like, you know, they're like, they find ways to send people through, you know, to have these experiences legally, you know, and then the fact that that's happening is, it, it's 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 really cool to see, but it's also very aggravating and sad that has to happen. Like, we can do that here. We should be doing that here. People shouldn't have to leave their states. We shouldn't have to leave their neighborhood if you don't need to. You know, that should be understood. I think, like, obviously, like the clinical means of things, like having to ensure, like, a second setting is the most beneficial for everybody, you know, that needs it. I think, like, that's the importance of legislation. You know, it's, it's being honest, like, not everybody should just give them, be given access to this. Like, I'm not interested necessarily in full support of recreation. I think eventually, you know, once society, like, Truly educated on it. I think people should have the right to do what they want, you know. But I think that we should most certainly have a medical understanding overall and educate not just doctors but society overall of what this can do that's positive and what it can be negative, you know. Because they're they're most certainly can be negative sides of psychedelics, you know. That's physical, most of them are very safe physically, but it can damn you in your mind if you're not ready for it. Um, and I don't think that's going to help anybody. So I think a lot of it's just in the space that we're in now, like having education, like having conversation, be able to talk, to, like learn more ourselves and tell our friends that might have questions about it or might be doubtful. Like, well, uh, what about me? <laughs> we're friends, right? You know, do you trust me? Because obviously you probably see the change in me. What do you think that was? It was this, you know, and, uh, and that's where we're at. Now. That's where we're at now. We're having this, we're having this conversation openly. Having this conversation, we're not going to have fear of having a conversation. And that's the great thing, especially about living in this country, is we have that freedom that we can actually talk about these things openly. Even when there's things in which we talk about aren't legal. You know, but we have the right to talk about it. And the fact that we can, we should most certainly take advantage of that. Educating ourselves and being able to educate others is what's going to get the legislation pushed through when it comes to play. You know, it's hard enough to get the politicians. Getting the people to understand it's like okay, this thing that we have to do. That's our responsibility. Uh, and then it's something that just popped in my head. I know that some cities, like my, you mentioned some research in Texas. My brother lives in Austin, 
and the Santo Domingo Church is legal. They legally do ayahuasca there and many other cities in the US. And I'm wondering if there are, if you know if there are any better from these groups that work with like the Santo Domingo. Um, I don't know about that one specifically, but there, like, there is a couple of non profit networks groups that do have church schools that operate there. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, that's one of the, like, their loopholes of how they can actually get there. But most of them, unfortunately, are still sitting in the country. Yeah. Um, because uh, uh, even though they're doing those things legally under the guise of the church, a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of gray area in that as well, unfortunately. Um, and a lot of those places get themselves in trouble just because mm -hmm. of the it, existence. A lot of them are like they have to be based on membership. Like they, it's it's a very weird structure of how those things work. This has to be right. because that's how the law allows them to operate. Um, and the the great thing is, like, obviously, the people that figured that out, like, they figured out there's like loopholes and like how do they get people to go. It's, it's still fast. very dangerous, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, like there's there's another one um, that's growing pretty rapidly called the Church of Silent Month Oxen, mm -hmm. which is it's a it's not a new compound. It's been around since like, I think it was, uh, I think it was found in the mid sixties or so. Um, but people were starting to learn more about it and what the potential of it is. But basically, what it is it's a it's almost like a cross between five MeO DMT and psilocybin. So it is you're introducing five MeO DMT into the mycelial mass of the psilocybin, and it turns it into a different compound, which is called psilocybin. Um, so like the protocol through that church is mostly like to teach people how to microdose with it. Uh, it's very powerful, like obviously it's, it's kind of right in line between psilocybin and DMT trip, especially if you took it at a microdosing level um, and they're operating with it. And then that's another weird one because that is a molecule that's not really regulated at this moment. So that's like kind of a loophole that they got through. Um, but obviously the manufacturing of that is you're two infusing two things that are yeah, so it's, like, it's another gray area. There's like so much of like there's which especially you know spending all this time like learning about the legislation and like learning the legalities between these things. It's there's a lot of weird gray, and I think some of that's on purpose. You know, we got we you gotta think like a lot of laws that seem damning to society typically also have some of the gray that behind them that didn't have the power to make it their way. Yeah, you know, so and there's a lot of gray areas, but basically, the, there's somebody in there who's like, you can't burn everybody that's trying this. You know, that's like that one kind of what I've learned through learning about the legislation, like talking to representatives. It's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> Do you know specifically the bill, the number for the uh, bill I introduced in Missouri? It's a House Bill 1154. Um, so it's, it's, like I said, it's in the process right now. Hopefully, I think there's less than two weeks before we can actually get it approved for Senate vote. Um, looking like it should, but there is a lot of bills, like 1,500 bills presented this year in Missouri. So uh, we'll see. And like I said, Eric, unfortunately, some things just take preference. You know, the, but the good thing is I think we had such an impact with the House Committee. It's the, it's the Veterans Committee for Missouri that was presented with the bills. Um, they're very sincere about it. And like, they want to see this and they know the impact it's going to have if this bill that actually makes it through. So I know they're working hard to like ensure that this makes it to the Senate. Um, it's, we'll see. Unfortunately, it's just a, it's a hurry up and wait type of thing. I have a question. I don't know if you can answer this, but um, you know, like when it comes to uh, mushrooms, like what strains of psilocybin, uh, like which ones are give the best body high and which one like gives the longest trip? It's such, it's such a strange. Okay. Well, uh, last yeah. night I had hillbilly and it it lasts kind of long, like yeah. compared to like the other, it's like a couple. Did hours. you have more of a full body experience with it too? Like physical? Uh, yeah, I've been kind of abusing them. I've done them. Thursday night, so it wasn't really strong. So you didn't get like the full. The yeah, full. I did. I did. I, I mean, I don't. I don't do more than three point five at a time. Yeah. But I do enough to feel. But I don't really get rituals with hillbilly. But it's more body. But it's it's a long last. Like the long lasting high is what I get most out of that. So I just wondering if are there like a, 
blood strain has the best white body average or it's the longest? It's, it's, it's such a, it's honestly kind of a subjective question. Because I mean, at the end of the day, um, it's, what, it's, it's, it's a weird one because a lot of mycologists will say a cubensis is a cubensis, meaning like every psilocybin mushroom kind of has the same density. And if you're experiencing it, it's all like whatever you're experiencing in that moment has 100% to do with like your set setting. I don't, think, I don't I think so either. <laughs> I've experienced a multitude of different strains. Um, mm -hmm. I've kind of obviously tried everything that I've ever come in presence with. <laughs> so um, I, I definitely can say that I don't know. But also to the extent of that, yes, set setting does have a huge role. Like even sometimes too big. Mm -hmm. um, so like, even past necessarily the mushroom strain, just doing more will be the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like if 3.5 is what you're comfortable with, maybe go to five, you know. Um, but obviously all of those things, set and setting plays the role in all of it. Safety first, you know, you're going to you like if you felt like you're getting there with 3.5 that you're kind of questioning things, maybe you should lock yourself down or you're five. <laughs> Safety obviously needs to be the primary goal of it. Um, and, but I, I guess to answer your question is, I, I guess for like the strongest experience that I've had um, on a personal level that I've had like the most reciprocation with, like from the people that I've heard from a lot of times, just like the Albion Penis Envy strain seems to typically be one of the, <laughs> <laughs> the heavier strains for a lot of people that yeah, usually will. Like, Humble the hell out of you, you know. Because a lot of times people will treat they treat them all the same. Like, oh, three five five. This one's the same as three point five. That yeah. one's like, you know, it's yeah. not. <laughs> so, I, I mean, if you're looking more for the heavier, like visual, like full encompassing of what the yeah, I, I, but I, 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 but that's also like I said, if you're looking at something like hillbilly, for mm -hmm. example, like a tryptamine town for hillbilly is probably going to be around like two to 2.5 percent tripping presence for net weight of the dry mushroom whereas for like a lot of penis envy you might be a full percent higher than that which is massive mm -hmm. massive you know so the, you could still just take more of the other so like if you just had something that is a little over you take more well see i'm um, not sure because i think some are just they're not, I don't think some are designed to be visual. I think some are like body and if I have some more, yeah. I'm not gonna be able to get the visual of another without getting like sick or, you know, like reaching the too high part. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, what's interesting is we don't know enough. Yet. Yeah. We do not know enough about mushrooms. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still like, I mean, it, it, it's not cannabis yet. Like, I mean, every day there's a new, there's a new compound cannabis that's been found. It's not that fast for yeah. mushrooms yet, unfortunately. You know, so like there's like a handful of tryptamines that we know are present in the average cubic mushroom or an average psilocybin containing mushroom. Um, and, there, and there's a multitude of different um, species and genera of psilocybin containing mushrooms that have their own difference in potency and things sometimes like that that we like to draw all, all the same because it has psilocybin and psilocybin present. So like, but there's so much more. Because like you said, obviously, like, I mean, there's, there's most certainly some mushrooms that will cause more nausea than others. And some that will most certainly elicit more of a visual experience. Um, and I think, obviously, the strain most certainly can have a play on that, but also shoes, it is person by person that is to an extent. Now, there's obviously things that are derived in each one of those specific strains that might have more propensity to send somebody there on the average. But that experience still is most certainly going to be personal person based. It's what I've gathered, like what my experience is, like hearing other people's testimonies of like using multiple different strains. Um, a lot of times, if you just take more of any, you will kind of reach. What that other one might have to offer. Um, but yes, it's, it's strange. Like you said, because like there's some that you could push limits on, you take, you know, 10 grams or something, you know, and, and have just a body experience with no vision. You know, and you can and you could replicate that every time that you use that mushroom. You know, so it's very strange. We don't understand it. I mean, it's not really understood my colleague at this point. Oh, it's just weird. <laughs> I, maybe anyone else knows this, but um. What do do the, do they know the effects of basically like 
can you mix and match strength where you take like I, I want the the length of the hillbilly but the <laughs> the, the visuals of the, the eight so can i do half and half and get a different effect you know because i tried it but i got sick when i mixed yeah. two. so i don't know if that's I, I definitely i have no sort of experience that way or experience it that way you know because i've always had like, what i have like where i'm at now i was like i'm tripping my uh, i do these things for education i like I, at this point i'm learning so like if i'm having experience with any strain or anything like that it's all the work about okay what's the this is this is it different you know that's how i've been able to gather that it is well, certainly different between some um and i have stacked and like done like two or three like blended stuff and like four or five straights at the same time um then i think some of it's overkill you know like because like, like, like i said a lot of times you can you can elicit what you're looking for just through a certain mindset and environmentally um so like when it, you mix and match that are you more likely to throw up from it do you think i typically do all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, if my body doesn't very, especially if I'm just cons consuming yeah. the whole, uh, my body typically does not take hold of it. Like, usually get nausea pretty easy. <laughs> just like, you're gross, 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 you are gross you are gross yeah, yeah. One thing, I, one thing I read is that you know, for the the molecules, I guess, in the mushroom head or something like that's what's making it kind of clear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or something like that, or yes, or yeah. your body just can't break the other levels. You need something like a lily type like extraction. Yes. Just kind of like simmer it. Mm -hmm. For everything else, yeah, just drink the water. You yeah, hopefully you won't get. See, I, I've done lemon, but I drink everything. Like, yeah, yeah. So eat the fruit, yeah. fruit yeah. and stuff. You're you're negating it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't throw the mushroom. Well, I, I read that it makes it stronger. It, it, it does. So, technically, like the. You see, and if you got a longer lasting strain, it's like you're just taking a little bit, but you're getting more, and then you can take the best. Absolutely. <laughs> Which a lot of people, a lot of times, like, but that's what people will do to, like, to, ex, to extend the life or to like, extend the body of, like, mushroom past. For example, if you have a gram and a half of mushrooms, mm -hmm. but you want that three gram experience, yeah. you might potentially be able to get. Your body's availability in the like the, the compound the silicon to be at a higher rate, but your body produce it better, so, so it can metabolize it faster, so it feels more like that three gram experience. So like the, the whole process, my like scientific process of like when you technique is your you know, you're adding mushroom in, adding uh, it, it doesn't have to be lemon, but any, anything acidic um, it turns the silicon or psilocybin into psilocin, which is what technically this is tripping your body, and that's what your liver is doing. Is it's breaking down the psilocybin and transferring that into psilocin? That's what's eliciting the, the trip itself. So, like through the soaking up, like you said, just putting it in water, you don't really need that much. Some people will like squeeze a whole lemon in there, just a little couple of lemon wedges, squeeze into a cup of water with the mushroom, broken up, and just agitate it every once in a while. We'll see the water turn blue. That's the extraction. You just sift out the mushroom. Drink the water, add it to a tea, whatever you want to do, and it's taking away from a lot of those things that are undesirable. That's going to cause the nausea, but also it's going to allow you to process faster because your body doesn't have to work the psilocybin. It's already it's already sourced. So you know, listen to faster trips, like you know, instead of waiting thirty-five minutes to an hour, you might wait fifteen to twenty minutes. And typically, it's going to come on faster. As far as like you're not going to have the gradual there, it's been an hour. Oh, it's two hours. No, it, you're, you're good at it. It's typically how it works, especially if you're doing a heavier dose of the that thing. Um, so there's like there's methods like that, like instead of like stacking mushrooms, just you know, more than a list of some more, there's methods of what you can do with consumption that are going to give you that so like stacking different mushrooms, like pairing things that way. Um, well, certainly, obviously, I've had some very interesting trips by stacking things. It's not necessary. Not necessary at all. I think a lot of times, so set and set, doing things like that, finding like methods that can actually strengthen what you have in front of you. You know, those are like good options for sure. So the monster you can buy anywhere, not like a pot. You have to go certain place. Well, uh, unfortunately, it's it's still illegal. Illegal, yes, yeah. And, um, besides, besides, or or 
will look like real monster. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, like, for example, if you're, if you're worried to get it, like most people are getting off like black water or something like that, obviously the best way from that most people that, that need it are finding ways to work it themselves. That's all I think. And then it's, it's not hard to do. Like I said, like the, the mushroom spores are legal to possess. Cultivation per portion, obviously, is not legal. Mm -hmm. um, anywhere besides one state right now. <laughs> so, you know, do that on your own terms. You know, like everybody's taking, anybody who does is taking the list. That's one of those things, like it's out of sight, out of mind type of thing. And it's helping you become a better person if you're out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it's like what I've learned that how I've been able to operate a business like I need mean, design obviously to have to cultivate the mushrooms to source the material for what you're sell in my business. You know, so it is a great area in which I operate, but I do it legally. I mean, like everything I'm doing, like all the steps that I take are legal. Now, obviously, the consumption of the mushrooms or like to uh, get the of mushrooms that are legal, unfortunately. You know, so as far as like the means of possession or being able to get your hands on them, it's like it's one of those things you gotta find in the right space, um, maybe the right people, learn how to do it yourself. Who you knows? Like it's honestly the safest way. It's like just learning how to do it. Um, just not very hard. It takes a little bit of work, but I mean, if you're just growing for you, it's, it's easy. You know, and it's one thing like to, to, to grow in mass, but it's another thing just like to, to grow for yourself. You don't need much. I find that in Bali 40 years ago when we went there, one of our friends took it, but his her husband said, I'm not going to take it because I don't know how it's going to react to you. So if, if I don't take it, if you went crazy, <laughs> so I can help you out. So he said she went crazy. Uh, they asked her, how do you want your mushroom, omelette or what? <laughs> I don't know how much they gave it to her, but they make it into omelette. I even don't know what it looked like. So she went crazy. She took off all her clothes and just went crazy. That's, that's well, the danger. That's, that's, that's yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. That's the best. Maybe that's, they gave her too much. <laughs> probably. Well, especially if they're giving you an option of how you want to take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're probably in the wrong space. They should probably already know that for you. Yeah, they should. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's like, but that's yeah. that's also like an honest conversation because mm -hmm. that's can't that is what can happen. It does. Yeah. Happen. So like the main thing is education. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, you know, yeah. and you shouldn't necessarily just trust a friend to like be the one that helps you. Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe they're not. Maybe emotionally they care for you enough, but maybe they're not happy if something physically was wrong, yeah. or you become a harm to them or somebody else or others mm -hmm. or, or themselves yeah. or others. You probably should have a professional on hand. You know, you yeah. should have somebody who already has that experience and understand, yeah. okay, what can I do in this moment to keep this person safe, to keep the surroundings mm -hmm. safe? You know, so that, that obviously the education portion of this is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And the transparency, too. Like, I mean, we want legislation to pass anywhere, mm -hmm. especially talking to representatives. Like, they're, they're going to ask the questions, okay, well, what, what, what can go wrong with this? I don't believe it's all this good. And you have to be honest. You know, but the fact of the matter, if it's used properly for the most, it's going to do far more good than they intend for. You know, so and that's, dangerous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they might just kill people. You never know. No, well, it's, so it's, it's crazy. It, it, it does happen. You know, it's like, and that's, yeah. that's the unfortunate thing is most psychedelics are very safe to consume. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very hard to overdose with, almost impossible for some things, especially like mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Good luck overdosing with mushrooms. You'll probably just throw up, throw it all up first. <laughs> it is will be a very bad experience if you wish you didn't do. Um, but absolutely, if you're in that state of mind or out of state of mind, you could most certainly harm yourself or somebody else. So that's the danger of it. You know, so it's like a lot of it's the education and being real that you most certainly you haven't experienced these things. You should probably do it in the hands of somebody with. with with the presence of somebody that knows it and has the compassion to like be with you in every moment of that experience, mm -hmm. even if it does take you to a dark space, even if it does bring me and bring you into a state where you're stripping your clothes off, that there's somebody there to care for you and yeah. to take care of you yes. and understand that they're trying to heal you. Mm -hmm. Um, so education on this is extremely important because that can happen, absolutely, yeah. it can happen, it does happen, yeah. you know, and it's, it's sad that it does, but that's also. The lack of education of what society knows, and unfortunately, 
all these years of propaganda and misinformation, we have to reteach people and also convince. Also convince. Which some amazing thing that's happening. People are being convinced. I mean, every platform, television platform, like Netflix, HBO, every single one of them's got some documentary now talking about psychedelics and the propensity that the psychedelics can do for good. Very few of them are talking about that just a good far outweighs it, but they're saying that that is the most important thing. You know, people in, in teaching people is the most important. You know, people should be able to make these decisions on their, on their own, but just like anything, like a prescription drug, that doctor understands if they need it or not. And I think like it, it should be kind of like a bad thing, you know, for now, you yeah. know, until as a society we can understand that. Yeah, you can go to a concert and do a little bit of mushrooms and heighten that experience and have a really good time, have a beautiful hippie era again. But the unfortunate part to that era was people still weren't educated. They were just taking it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's where it kind of started to go wrong and unravel. And why we had to like backtrack to get back to what we did then. It was stuff, stuff that was thrown away. You know, it's been locked up all the way up until a couple decades ago. You know, we're starting to learn about it again now because unfortunately, propaganda deemed all those things as untrue when it was already true. And that's just how things work, but you know, the attractions there, you know, these complications are being had, people are becoming educated. Um, obviously, the abilities that we have to prove things in clinical trials are more, far more than what they were in the 60s or 50s when they were doing a lot of these clinical trials. Um, so, it's honestly, so it's kind of a damning thing that we've had to go this long with criminalization. But at the same time, it's allowed all of this time for education in the right hands, us. Like we don't need to have our power with politicians. They're, they don't need to tell us how to live our lives. We need to know how to live our lives. And it, it can be learned a lot of times through these experiences, especially if there's compassion behind it. Now 623. Still have the space for another 30 or so minutes. Um, does anybody have any general questions? Maybe not necessarily for Daniel, but just anything that you guys have been thinking about or I have a quick question. Um, it's it's not really an important one, but uh, this past week it was bicycle day. And <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it had city of like because I've been in the past couple of years, I'd say, hey, let's, we, we, you know how we make proclamations of different days. I've said we should make a proclamation that April 20th is 420, just to show support, you know, for marijuana users and also, you know, try to get a leg up for when it does become legal that. Because businesses here are already good for 20 deal, but anyway, I was bringing up, hey, let's consider bicycle day. Anyway, I, I was just wondering, um, is bicycle day is it just for acid users, or do you think it's for all cyclists? Like, because I don't want to be, you know, saying, hey, this is something mushroom users can, you know, if I test off acid users. <laughs> I mean, well, technically, I mean, that day is founded on the celebration of that experience. You know, so like it technically is set around LSD. Yeah. But I think it's just a celebration of all types of things. Yeah. It's kind of what it is. I don't want to get a Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Well, if an acid user is upset with that, they haven't taken enough. Yeah. And then maybe they'll do a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I hope they would. Yeah, they, they definitely need like three values. That was a question. I have a question. Um, you talked about Datura quite a bit, and then you, uh, you also talked about it being illegal. Um, my understanding of Datura is the common name is Moon Drug. Um, 
Moonflowers grow all over the states I have lived in, yes. including Lawrence. They're, they're prolific around Lawrence. And the seeds are sold at everywhere. So there's so a there's a misconception. So so there's a misconception about moonflower and mature itself that all the same thing. So the moon flower no, is not a cycle with the other. And even cactus a lot of times the same way the seeds look nothing alike. The moon flower seeds are much larger for one. And they have a very similar structure as well as the flower itself. The turret of the grows bush, whereas moon flowers can grow as um, Oh no, moon flowers I'm talking about growing bush. They're all see. over Lawrence. And they have a trumpet like flower. Yeah. That's huge. Okay, then you want these? Yeah, I want these. Okay, okay. And the package Take says, Moonflower and underneath Ditcher. Interesting. I'm actually going to back up in Kansas. It is technically a Kansas state state in possess that. Yeah. Now, now, obviously, while we're going on, cutting it down because it does. Oh, you'll it. see it going Yes, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, down, down, down the highway, so that you see the patches of the phone. I mean, it's in the yard. Well, it's, yeah. in, it's in my backyard. Well, when it, it, it's, it's an extremely unique but aggressive plant. Mm -hmm. very, 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 very seeds take very easily. So very, 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 Kansas is probably because like one of the few states that actually have any type of legislation against it is because most people are not willing to try it. Well, <laughs> for good <laughs> for good reason. Most people don't know about it. Most most people that would like to change this meeting go to the And it's depending on which market it is getting the word out about this meeting is a lot of people don't know about it. Yeah. Well for like you said, I mean of course I was. But people probably have not really seen the flower itself when they've seen the seen it. How about your business card? I mean, did you bring your business card? I did not, man. So I actually just moved my business. Luckily, I've seen it. If anybody wants to make a purchase, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to talk to you after the meeting. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so I'm in the process of going. Um, I haven't even had a website yet. Yeah. So I have, I've literally just been operating for word of mouth. And if you do um, presentation at VFWs, local VFWs, I, I have a business book. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. For sure. And just maybe, you know, people don't have to, you know, they can be discreet and not talk to you in person. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just a thought. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, the, the terms, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. It's a, uh, it's like it grows everywhere. Most people have like seen it, you know, yeah. and like, so, most people have seen it because it does grow is literally in almost every single state. Um, there's a multitude of different species of it with different potencies and how it grows. Mm -hmm. um, all are dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> all should be like, taken. I'm take not care. interested in taking that. The flowers yeah. are fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that we're here. Like, some people are actually selling seeds. All, all the hardware stores. Yeah. Every one of them is crazy. That's like hardware. So, I wonder. I wonder. Has, has it been like that for a while? Have you seen it for like I've only been around? here about 15 years. Okay, but you've seen, but you've seen it like through that time span. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting for sure. Yeah, because there is legislation against it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. We must not care. Then there's like a loophole, especially if the knowledge is like pretty limited about it. Exactly. Exactly. One of the things that it was like, yeah, it, 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 there's typically people won't. Like, 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 yeah, you go to YouTube, you look up trip reports, or you like try to read up like on Reddit trip reports, you'll rarely find good stories because, in most cases, people are just using it, they're like using it recreationally, they have no clue what they're getting themselves into, and typically find themselves in a very dark space. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. <laughs> I also wanted to uh, appreciate your stating how important it is your environment and education and to have someone with you because that my experience with, with psychedelics that was always the case yeah. and that and to be a virgin at psychedelics and to do it by yourself i think it could be absolutely horrifying for some people absolutely. and you might be having a perfectly fine experience but i mean 
and it's nothing as simple as the floor moving could just freak somebody out. But so I think it's important to have a comfortable environment and to have people that you trust, people that have experienced it, you know, quantities and things like that. So that in your situation, that person was a not very really loving environment to yeah, educate people that had plenty of experience with you. So fortunately for me, I was, and it was all wonderful. So. Absolutely. Once to this, like the unfortunate part about it too, is like even today, like there, I mean, unfortunately, it's like uh, I I support legislation because uh, I, I, I think that like, legislation for safety. You know, so unfortunately today, there's a lot of people that have like you know, social trauma. You know, there's a lot of pseudo this and that out there that are like becoming a home health practitioner with good intentions in mind, but not the proper training and understanding of every person is different mm -hmm. and what do you do if it goes wrong with that person mm -hmm. and that is a very personal thing that is, it takes years of education it takes years of experience and knowledge um it's, and unfortunately like these experiences are so impactful like they might feel like they're shot after that person mm -hmm. and there unfortunately is a lot of people like that then and, and because the legislation is not in place yet you have a lot of people that start to like operate businesses that and kind of operate in a gray area themselves. And that does happen, and it's unfortunate. You know, the legislation should have a hand on this just to ensure that people get together. You know, people do get what that has to offer. And just throwing yourself to the wolves is not the best way. Like having these educated people around you that know specifically what can go wrong and what to do to help you if it does. Is very important, you know, especially when you lose and It's very important. And yeah, should we get to the point at some point that's some point where people want to go get mushrooms from the dispensary? Should that happen? Eventually, you know, what do we got working now is getting to see that happen. <laughs> you know, because um, I think at the end of the day, either way, even with the un unproper. Uh, Unproper, like uh, learning about these things, and stuff, like misusing, and then recreationally, most of the time, it's still going to be very impactful for that person. Yeah, I, I, I want to add, it's all about money. You know, that's why oh. lots of people in Missouri. Absolutely, because yeah. Missouri yeah. wants money, Absolutely. and they're getting it. Absolutely. They're getting lots and lots and lots. Every state's getting plenty of money, so it's not about ethics or whether this is good for somebody or mm -hmm. blah blah blah. And that's how, unfortunately, these medicinals that are being talked about today with the legislation if they were called psychedelics it would probably be approved a lot faster but when you use 60s language and and words like psychedelics or tripping or things like that they're not going to want to listen yeah oh absolutely i mean i i even know a woman who said uh, when pot was legalized in, in missouri she said well, what are they going to do when they're seeing colors and they're having <laughs> all these experiences? And I, tell, I said, I didn't say it to her, but I said to my daughter, I was like, people don't do that on pot. But with psilocybin and, and, and acid and things like that, it's language and who your market is. Who are you talking to? And if you're talking to suits and People that are in their 80s, 70s, and 80s, like a lot of our congressmen, mm -hmm. they're not going to want. They're not going to be responsive to those words. And Absolutely. so you have to manipulate your presentation to fit your target, and maybe talk in terms of profitability. Absolutely. Uh, well, which is 100 percent true. I mean, I, I, I think I, 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 I'm a little too busy for that. You know, so like I said, when I started in 2021, it really didn't have for me that we. This too, it was lobbyists find a representative that'd be willing to push a bill, and we kind of don't get there. Like, no committee would talk because it wasn't being talked to the right hands, it wasn't coming or addressed the right ways. So, like, when I came on, a couple other veterans came on and started like, sharing their testimony, and like, go up to the Capitol and start sharing what the representative like, not only doing as much as we could educate them, like, the clinical efficacy of these things, but like making them feel our experience. Mm -hmm. And then talking to representatives that were veterans themselves is really where it started to have to climb because they started to feel it. 
it's, it's, it's for them it's not money. They're like, oh shit. Well, I, I can't I can't think about money on this because this does affect me too. I'm getting I know what you're doing. And then that's what's allowed this legislation to get to where it's at now. And like even on the means of that, it's still a lot of convincing of, of these representatives to you know, uh, for example, when the, the current, so the current bill right now for Missouri that is the process of getting voted through, um, the specific is for political access for veteran tribes. Um, they're trying to make it one of the one of the one of the committee um, members is trying to make an amendment to the bill of which they are wanting to halt any trials if anybody were to pass away during the trial. Well, here's the here's the thing about that. Is in any trial you sign for that trial, and there is a risk. That's why it's a trial. So why would you treat this any different? You know, unfortunately, every other member halted that one pretty quickly. And then even sitting down and talking and sharing testimony for these bills um, with the committee, and talking about like the current access, so like the clinical trial that's going on in Kansas and in Missouri and most other states right now, all the recent synthetic cases that are not even being made by companies from this country, like for, like for example, uh, uh, well, Washington, uh, Washington University in St. Louis is doing multitude of trials right now and has been for a couple of years. Um, they're buying most of their psilocybin from a company in London. You know, so it's like, it's like this isn't even get a fit. An American company, a pharmaceutical companies, but they're getting a kickback. That's why they're doing it. And the committee, it's been kind of interesting because, like, obviously, I've come in at the means of like, I, I, for one, have a personal goal in this. Like, I, for one, I do, I'm in this space because I care. I found something that I'm driven to do. I found something that I'm passionate about. And I'm setting myself up in a place to be able to do this legally. In a means of which I can produce for the state and help people in the process. And I've made that very clear. And it's been very interesting to see their shift to like, okay, maybe we should have a veteran do this. Maybe we should have somebody actually make these things instead of a pharmaceutical company that's just going to pack them mm -hmm. and drive up the price so the people that could benefit from this won't be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. And that's the fact. And like that's, and, and I, in the first committee hearing that we had for this bill, that was one thing that was actually said by one of the representatives after I shared my testimony. It was like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to, for me, I don't want to see this go into another pharmaceutical company's hand. That's why, it's, that's why the VA is failing into the pharmaceuticals. They can keep giving people poison. When we see that this can work, why are we going to allow a pharmaceutical company to continue that? And it's it's really beautiful to see that you know that that mindset's changing, you know. Then, but it's been years of educating, years of like being present, years of like giving a reason why that's important. It's like why? What's the point of garnering access for these things? If it's you're going to make it impossible for people to afford. And you know, obviously, it goes cost and passion. And that's what's kind of happening is uh, a lot of the representatives that I've been talking to for the last several years are definitely coming in the direction. And without having these experiences themselves, because they see how real it is for myself and for the other people that are working on it. Because they're fast tracking, the FDA is fast tracking the MDMA. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, but it might be because my benefit is so easier. incredible. Yeah. Like, it would be basically immoral to slow it down. So exactly. I think that's going to be. Yeah, and then that's federal, federal therapy. That's yeah. federal, I and mean, that's that's going to happen before most states have a legislation on anything. Yeah, and I, which I is, have a friend who's in training. She's already a psychotherapist, but she's in training by the uh, MAPS. Is that what's called? Yeah, the that's Daniel, awesome. MDMA assisted psychotherapist. That's awesome. That's that's. that's, that's I mean, she was she's in uh, Kansas actually. Is she really? She said there are multiple yeah. people in their training group in Kansas. Surprising. There's only ten people. people. That's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, they understand. What's cool to see is these things aren't legal yet, but that's already happening. That's somebody that's going to get paid to do this. Yeah. It's like, you know, if you, if you have a passion for this space yeah. and you feel driven to be here, yeah. there is opportunity and you should take it if you 
filter it. Yeah. You know, they have to, they have to, at the end of the day, these these are all things that can most certainly benefit every community. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody as a whole could benefit benefit from this. And I mean, it, or pass anything else, or pass anything else. You know, and, and the fact that you have somebody from Kansas <laughs> that could go there and get this train is amazing because in a year or two, she would operate it. She would be able to do this. Yeah, I mean, it's already happening all over the place yeah. here. I, mean, I, have, I know people who are facilitators who've been in training for like 10 years and they're facilitating groups all over the region here. It's all it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, but it's amazing. It's beautiful. The well, community it, is, and is the, the cool thing is like they have a structure to understand the efficacy of the practice. And this is like they there's been a structure that's been created of which they've been able to study and have like their backing and validity behind. It's like the, you know the same thing as like having the title of you know, a doctor. And that's important. You probably want the title of the doctor working on your heart transplant, the Joe Schmo off the street, right? <laughs> because they've been there, done that, they've studied. You know, there is something to that. So, like, people that have time to, and like those, there's there's a lot of different titles that are being made because there's a lot of people in the practice that create these titles, and that's powerful. And like, those are, those are things that are happening when this is not legal, but it's happening. And, and that's what the gray area is. And that's, that's the amazing thing about it is there is a gray area. It's fine with absolutely everywhere. It is. Everywhere, everywhere. I mean, there's there's loopholes for everything, and a lot of it too is like I've had people ask me before, like, well, your business, for example, like what I do in my business, like, like afraid that I'm like, getting caught up. I'm not, because what I'm doing is legal. It is a gray area. Technically, cultivating mushrooms or psilocybin mushrooms is illegal. It is, and I source. So like I'm I'm specifically sourcing the spores, which I can legally do, you know, and and, and for me. Like the, the risk of any of that is nothing in comparison to the reward of like knowing that what I have to produce can help somebody. And that's all that matters. And I'm not like, I'm not afraid of the law because I'm not a criminal. And most people that are doing these things are not criminals. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I really don't. And, and, the, and the fact of the matter is like, well, those of you who benefit for these things is uh, law enforcement. A lot of law enforcement is are getting caught out of this. They're dealing with their issues with PTSD and a lot of the issues that law enforcement across the board is dealing with. They're finding their ways to psychedelics. And there's you'd be surprised by how many law enforcement groups there are that are that are making outreach in the space as well, and even speaking out with legis for legislation. That are active on the police force. I mean, it's happening, you know, and, and they're not getting much pushback. It's only better in the force. Right. You know, so it's, I, I think, kind of the cool thing about where we're at now is I think the people that are set forth to, to enforce the laws that are against this are starting to recognize there's not a threat. Right. So they don't care. I mean, they're looking for the person that's, you know, it is just just looking for profit. They're looking for that guy, you know, looking for the person that's just selling to anybody without like giving them understanding of what it could potentially do negatively to them. You know, like yeah, most certainly and as they should, as they should, as legislation goes, that should be something that's written in. And they're like, yes, these things should be understood. They should be in the hands of people that truly understand the propensity of what they have or what they're manufacturing or giving away has the ability to hurt somebody, you know, and, and not just doing things proper, you know, and I think that's kind of the cool thing, like the, the why I always felt comfortable in the space, like I know exactly what I'm doing. And I've always been open to it, you know, especially like since I had my ousting in 2021 when I, when I like I came out with you know was in a story piece, you know, and then I then I went and did a Another company called Psychedelic Spotlight, which is based out of California. I like, went on, went on, and I did an interview with the, with their company, um, like I'm, I'm nationwide. People will see me, you know. So like, I'm, I've been very open about this, like what I'm doing, because I have no fear of what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing is right, you know. And then at the end of the day, it's like grassroots efforts of anything. Like change happens 
by keeping this doing it without having to do it. And if there's a consequence of anything, I'll fight it. And I have enough people behind me that will fight it. You know, that's like the way I think it's good. Definitely look at it now, you know, and I have looked at it the last couple of years, but don't have fear in this space. You know, if you're here and you feel driven towards it, you should be in it. You know, like just educate, educate, educate. Learn, 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 learn. That's the main thing. It's always learn. You know, always have the always have an answer. You know, always like always be confident, you know, about what you're doing here, like why you want to do this, why you want to be in this space. And if it's good, you have nothing to worry about. Go out of bed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we can start wrapping up. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, let's all just do a little shake out and uh, we'll take nice three nice, real big deep breaths and just clear the space. Appreciate y'all for hanging out. Come to see us on a Sunday. Um, the next meeting I am anticipating is going to be on the next fourth Sunday of May 28th. So that was kind of the date so folks now. Um, I will put up flyers and do all my regular marketing kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah. Um, for folks that do want to get more involved, feel free to hop on the Moral Psychedelic Society Facebook group. Um, if you haven't joined yet, but there's a small questionnaire just for uh, cover your ass purposes and make sure that we keep spam and all that kind of stuff out. Um, yeah, if you're open to get more involved, uh, we'll see what the group needs. Um, I know there's some folks that couldn't be here and that, that did want to get more involved and just to see what the group kind of needs. but. Uh, so far, my intention is just to hold the monthly in-person meeting so folks can gather and meet. Um, I intend to have another couple guest speakers in the next couple months, and then we can kind of just see what the group kind of wants and needs. And if we want to do like more workshops, maybe like a day in the rooms and like a grow kit, and sure it's like folks just like the basics of like cultivating your own mushrooms. Um, that could be something we can figure out too. Um, but yeah, but otherwise, I appreciate you Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, feel free to make all the chat for, for a little bit more.